right. Well, good morning, everyone. It's good to, to be with you again, at least uh, through video. Very excited for everything God has for us today. And we hope and pray that you're doing well and you're encouraged in the Lord. That seeing that slowly but surely things are beginning to open back up. And hopefully soon we'll be able to meet together again. So we thank you for your patience and uh, pray that in your houses and wherever you're at, uh, you're having the opportunity to meet with the Lord and read His Word every day and pray. Uh, personally, uh, our family is going to try to head to the United States to get uh, drop off Olivia and get her set up for college for the fall. We hope to fly out on the 16th of June. And uh, then return at, at the end of the summer. But everything is changing all the time, so we'll see what happens, but please keep that in prayer. Really praying that we'll have a chance to at least meet one time all together before, before we leave. But I don't know, we'll see. Um, so, Chu, is there any announcements or prayer requests that we have? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, ឬក៏បងប្អូនទៅសេះផ្ញាទៅកាន់អ៊ីមែលខាវិជ្ជាប៉ុស្តិ៍ក្នុងពេញឬក៏បងប្អូនទៅសេះផ្ញាទៅក
hỏi bao tiền đồng vốn đào phụ hào ra phụ bò sốt nâng phụ ọt nẹ lấy cao khoai đào phụ niêm trùng cứ chia phụ ba bồng ra trùng tàng tô tàng thông đài hỏi thà à, xâm tục hỏi chia phê trai bồng khoai phụ nẹ đào bồng khốt phèm đầy phòng nụ mên kế bạc bè bì hiền này bếp nơi xa xù hỏi khơi miên hấp nơi xích đầy xa nhà đồng bọn trùng nơi khăn ông bè bì hiền nụ rút miên phê lệch bàn tô xiêng xâm lên cô luôn có các đầy nâng bờ dạng thông thông All right, so here we see this angel sounding the seventh trumpet. And so the events that we're going to be looking at today and in part next week are events that happen under the seventh trumpet judgment. You remember earlier in chapter 11 we're introduced to those two dramatic characters, the, the two prophets of God. And these two guys um, we think possibly could be Elijah and Moses, but we don't know for sure. These guys are given great power to bear witness of Jesus Christ during the first part of the tribulation period. So the ministry of these two mighty prophets uh, happens in the first three and a half years of the tribulation. And of course, they're they're witnessing, and they have power to breathe fire and destroy anybody who tries to come against them. And, um, but God allows Satan to overcome them eventually and they die and the whole earth celebrates. It becomes a new kind of a world holiday. Almost like Christmas, people are giving presents to each other and celebrating, and they, their bodies lay in the streets for, I think, what is it, three and a half days here. So they just allow their bodies to lay out on the street, verse 9 of chapter 11, for, for three and a half days. But then after these three and a half days, God raises them and they come back to life. And everybody's watching. It's interesting because, you know, here we have an event that there's no way everybody on the earth could have witnessed this uh, until 50 years ago with the, the, the advent of television. You know, satellites. But now that the world is connected through social media and through this. Uh, cell phone technology and and internet, we see things uh, all over the world all the time. Everybody on the earth can look at something. But hey, 
bắt cho ban cao dương cục lục miền ca prai pro miền ca thì quá dương cho cho mọi từ mẹ ngon hơn tam còn sừng cung chỉ trai hơn hay vì cục lục này dương ai khơi prati ca là prati ni là prati nu ban dạng nghe suốt dương miền tu sập dương miền internet nó đầy mọi dương so this is a very interesting sign of the times if you will because you know the the events being described here in the book of revelation uh, we now have the ability to for these things to actually come true just out of technology we can see everything that's going on by nghe suốt vừa dừng khơi thà quay đại công ty vì bọn nạn đã tên đi bàn pháp dưỡng nghe suốt nâng ai kênh nó không ai chờ tờ chỉ cao phần mệnh tên ưu tỏ ra để thằng phi nâng rùa làm quýnh hơi mà nó chẳng ọc mơ khơi nghe suốt nâng ai mà nó chẳng ọc mơ khơi kênh 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 chân mệnh tên bị khổ lớn dương miên tù tù dương miên chân phi và chạy cả phần chia tất của kênh nghe suốt nâng kênh khơi and uh, so God raises them up and everybody on the earth sees that and now they're terrified because you hear this <laughs> These guys are back alive again. Ba chăng a prang ban prang quat tung pin ao ya min chuvet ru lang wing hao ya lau manu nơ lơ phan dai nang kuk ke cha pram phai khlai ba phai khlai nang tung pin. Then God says come up here. So again we have that same phrase that we saw in chapter 4. Come up here and they're kind of raptured up to be in the presence of the Lord. Ba nơ khnong chu phuk 11 khot 12 min pia tha chou lau mo ai nei da pa ong prap tae kan nei tung pin nang hai mien nơ khong chu phuk 4 doi khnie da and then we have this powerful earthquake. And so as we come into verse 15, the seventh angel sounds. You notice the loud declaration of heaven. It says, The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord, and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. And so Jesus swings into action now. And 24 elders fall down before the throne again. And they were worshiping God. We give thee thanks, O Lord, the Almighty, who art and who was, because thou hast taken thy great power and hast begun to reign. Yes. ចាំទុំទាំងអភ័យបួននោះក៏បន្តនិយាយថាអោព្រះអង្គចាស់ជាព្រះដ៏មានប្រជាស្ដាបំផុតដែលគុំនៅក៏បានគុំនៅតាំ
and um, they're going to stand before what we'll see in chapter 20, the great white throne of God. By uh, in verse 20. And chapter 20. And chapter 20. Wow. 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 And that happens at the end of Christ's kingdom. So Christ is going to come back. He's going to rule upon the earth for 1,000 years. After those 1,000 years, there's this great white throne that, that he's seated on, God is seated on. And the dead, everyone who's died, all the unbelievers will be judged and sentenced at that time. So the, the unbelieving dead are judged, and then it notice it says in verse 18, and the time to give their to give their reward to the saints and to those who fear thy name, the small and the great. And so this is a judgment of believers. And it looks really, it's more than a judgment, it's a... Um, uh, a giving of rewards. Um, God is going to test the quality of our work, and we'll read about this in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And our work is going to be tested by fire. Um, and so let's go ahead and read here verses 12, 13, and 14. And 15, 12 through 15. Yeah. ក៏ដល់ពីដល់ក៏ដល់ប្រាំបាអ្នកណាយកមាសប្រាក់ត្បងឈើស្បើឬស្លឹកដើម្បីនឹងធ្វើពីលើជើងជុនជាងនេះន
sốm nát cá chấm mông chấm rẻ tăng pi đại dương ban dây mày nứng và to tim miên nơi mốc bà lang qua so đại thuật cá chấm mông chấm rẻ bộ nhà mình chưa bỏ nâng thuật cái cá nâng hói hay nâng miên đôi cam bị thi mũi tiếc đại dương giới thất đôi cam của cô pi đồng quan loại đại chia nhớ nhớ cứ mình bên bên cá chấm mông chấm rẻ bước mà bây giờ tê tê bị cô dương ban sầm kêu nhưng tôi chưa bỏ hói tại đồng miên cá của cô nơi đồng quan tiếp số mong trong đồng quan tất cả một vài đại khuôn ban thưa sẽ bỏ hỏng and I think it's interesting that the 24 elders here are giving thanks to God because really that's one of the great signs, the great evidences of a true faith in our heart is when we as believers just simply give thanks to God. In the tribulation period, during this time of judgment, it's going to be very dramatic difference between the two groups. You're going to have the people on the earth cursing God and shaking their fist at God and hating God, and then you're going to have the other group thanking God. It'll be very clear who is who. And so then we come there to the last verse and it says, And the temple of God which is in heaven was opened. And the Ark of His Covenant appeared in His temple. Uh, so here we have this picture of the heavenly tabernacle. And so there's actually going to be a tabernacle in heaven and there's going to be an ark. And we know from Hebrews that Jesus represents both the temple and the ark. <laughs> Uh, uh, but so here God says mentions the ark and there were flashes of lightning sounds of peals of thunder and an earthquake and a great hailstorm so everything's going to be shaking. Uh, it's going to be very terrifying. Very powerful. And so if you're a Jewish person reading this, this is extremely powerful. And so um, it's as though God is communicating to John the Apostle here that heaven is, is open and everyone can see now. Alright, so that's what's going on. Now we move into chapter 12. And let's just read there the first six verses. Okay, uh, yeah, one មានប្រណាំងខ្លួនដោយព្រះអាទិត្យមានប្រចាំនៅក្រោមជើងក៏មានមកគាត់ធ្វើពីផ្កាយ <cười> Crawl, child, the pandy. Need no cost, no drum, mock, satray. 
đại diệp nâng sầm ra câu nụ tạm bay nâng lép câu niềng không ca và sầm ra chân mộc niềng sầm ra ban con pro đã trở khuya group ở tiền sạt đòi làm bóng đại tại phía trung lơ câu niềng từ ai trung nâng nâng đó bà lang trung quỳnh rồi sẽ trở nuôi con rốt từ ai tiền hào sản nơi tiền nuôi phía ban diệp còn lại ao niềng làm bay nâng từng trăm niềng nơi tiền nuôi ở rồi viên một con pi rồi học sập ngày All right, so we see two great signs here. And so this uh, this signs uh, refers to a symbol which represents something. So it's important to read at the, in verse 1 of chapter 12, and a great sign appeared. So John is seeing something that signifies something or represents something. Um, and notice verse 3, and another sign appeared in heaven. So we're using signs and symbolic language here. In verses 1 and 2 we're introduced to a woman. Her clothing is interesting. She was clothed with the sun and the moon and the 12 stars. That's not ordinary clothing. <laughs> But it's interesting, when you think of the sun and the moon and the 12 stars, what story do you think about in the Old Testament? Well, some of you may have thought of the dream of Joseph. And we well, we, we can't read the whole story, obviously, but let's just go to Genesis 37. And Joseph is having these dreams, and now he's trying to relate the dream to his brothers. Who aren't happy about it. So here in chapter 37, verses 9 through 11, Joseph is relating one of his dreams. Uh, 9 through 11. Begins, now he had still another dream. Yeah. ពួកបងគាត់ថាខ្ញុំបានយកសពឃើញដូច្នេះទៀតគឺថ្ងៃខែនឹងកាយតែ And so in that dream, of course you had Joseph and then you had the sun and the moon as his father and his mother, right? And then his brothers, the stars, so that represents the people of Israel. So in that story, we know what happens to Joseph. His brothers are going to be jealous, they're going to sell him into slavery, and through all of his suffering and time in prison and And slavery, he's going to rise to be the second most powerful man in the world, second to Pharaoh. And And while Joseph rises to power in Egypt, a great famine is throughout the land, and his brothers and his father and mother will actually come from Canaan and bow down before him. And 
trong cơ sở phục quát trong cơ sở quát bóng bóng quát bất chìm mô hào ơi grab hoài một công nơi chìm bố lúc dù xa phật mẹ and so it seems that this woman actually represents then Israel và hãy chắc hạn bởi đôi chìa sạch trây đại cầm phong tài pháp yên ở trong lúc bảo bạc chúng đọc bí khóm hối nâng sạch trây nâng cư chìa Israel Joseph saved in saving his brothers and family he saved Israel và hãy lúc dù xa đã chui Now it says here that um, uh, she was with child and she cried out being in labor and in pain to give birth. And um, we also know that she, it, it says here in the story that she gives birth to a male child. So she is to give birth to a male child through much pain and he will rule the nations with a rod of iron. Verse 5. And she gave birth to a son, a male son. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it says, and then her child was caught up to God and to his throne. Okay. And so, um, so she gives, she gives birth, right? And we know this is Jesus. Um, if you go to Revelation 19, verse 15. Um, yeah, and on his robe. Uh, verse 15 and from his mouth comes a sharp sword so that he may smite the nations and he will rule them with a rod of iron okay and so um, but because it's a woman giving birth to a son many people immediately go to Mary they think this is Mary but remember the sign represents something and so the woman represents Israel and Mary has already died and she is with the Lord. <laughs> Jesus is not going to be physically born again. And uh, you may remember in Matthew chapter 24, Jesus will actually tell Israel uh, at the at the certain point in the tribulation, this midpoint, to run to the mountains to hide because they're going to be attacked. And so, you know, in Jeremiah, there's a verse where Jeremiah calls this time the time of Jacob's trouble. Jacob represents Israel. Sometimes he's called Israel. This is the time of Jacob or Israel's trouble. And so no, it's not Mary. Uh, Mary is with the Lord. But remember, the, it's the sign of the woman. The woman represents something. Okay, now the second sign that we saw there was the sign of the great dragon. 
và cứ tiếp xúc qua một cái địa đọt thông mùi It says a great red dragon having seven heads, ten horns, and on his heads were seven diadems. Và nó có nông cà phê quan điểm vì địa nâng cư viên mình sẵn bò có hôm, mình có ba, bàm pi, mình sẵn anh đọc hào nơi lực mà viên mình mà có bàm pi. Ok, and so uh, if you go to um, chapter 17, Well, actually, actually, before we go to chapter 17, look at verse 12 of chapter 12. We'll jump ahead here. It says, For this reason, O heavens, and you who dwell in them, woe to the earth and to the sea, because the devil has come down to you, having great wrath, knowing that he has only a short time. So the great dragon represents the devil. Và chẳng là dương mưa khó đọc đọc bì một lết Nên chẳng phục đọc bì nữa nhưng xong ăn chún Đói hát nút Áo xa xưa nâng cụ nẹ đàn nơi xa nút ươi Châu ô sập ai lá Tài vết tên hết đó phan đây nâng xa mọt vầy Vì bố á rẹp bàn chốc Mọc ai nẹ rõ khả nế Tiếng mê xí kết đây khô khơi chế khả năng Đói viết đăng thá vết tên hết Xong tổ đói viết đăng thá Pê vê lìa Vìa khlê nạ hỏi And notice that this That this dragon's got seven heads and ten horns và cho những khuyên thà niệm nâng vía miên có ba phẩm pi hai năng sanh đọc Notice uh, chapter 17 verse 7 Ba nâng khuyên nâng Khoa đọc bằng bớ, ơ chú phụ đọc bớ, khoa đọc bớ And it says here, and the angel said to me, why do you wonder? I tell you the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carries her Which has the seven heads and the ten horns, right? Um, and then if you go down a little further, it tells us what all those things represent. It says, here is, here is the mind which has wisdom, verse 9. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sits. This is a different woman. We'll get to her later. Uh, and they are the seven kings. Five have fallen, one is. The other has not yet come. And when he comes, he must remain a little while. អនិហោជាកំណត់ដល់មានប្រាជ្ញាឯកបាលតាមពីនោះជាភ្នំ <coughs> ancient city that is famous for being built on seven hills or seven mountains. And that makes sense since uh, as we go back into Daniel, when Daniel's talking about his vision of this time, uh, the fourth and most terrifying beast that he describes is the Roman Empire. There's some similarities. We should actually go there. Let's go to Daniel 7. So you can see how it fits together. So Daniel's vision and John's vision really correspond. There's there's a lot of overlap in the things that they saw. So let's read 23 through um, 26. Thus he said, the fourth beast will be a fourth kingdom. Then 
đào chướng prong tang lục ắt cầm tay phong ai snai tang đắp nu cứ miên nu cứ nằng miên đắp đắp ông cái lang pin nó còn nu hỏi cái nói một nằng miên mũi tiếc cái lang đã nằng phai pin đắp mồn mồn còn nằng tụm lệ đắp bay ông nu cho đắp nu nằng phố bị to nằng bẹt đọc u mồm hot hỏi nằng thôi tụt biệt biên đọc u bò sát nằng bẹt này đọc u mồm hot đại prong tang cất bằng plaque của nó đang chụp ảnh phong hơi kia đang trở về phố tây thanh long đặt này cần đặt tay này sẽ nu nơi mùi khu pi khu hơi gần lạc khu. So Daniel and John are speaking about the same exact person. It's a person that we call the Antichrist. Và chẳng là lúc Daniel hay là lúc du hát cứ phục kê này dây ông pi mà núi đôi khi là cứ chia nè và chăng đang phải kinh. And he'll come. It would seem that's why we believe out of a newly developed Roman Empire, which is happening currently happening today, as Europe comes together to form that old Roman Empire. Và chẳng là viên ca lao tam dễ luôn liên bay môi đầu viên ca đòi 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 rót tham về ba Rome mình viên ca bằng cao sang dịch mây chẳng hay đôi sang phía bắc bón miền nước non sạt phía bờ rót kia bàn rút rung như là bay bằng cao à đôi khi nước làng and and we know that the the dragon is going to destroy for 42 months, which is three and a half years. By near noon and three of the plan, the Yapi, Baitan Galah, by the man size of the Kaiden, Baitan Galah. It's 1260 days, according to verse six. By the top, what have you been hiding? Okay, and uh, verse six says that. It says gives the days, and that that's exactly the number of days in three and a half years. On a, but it's a different calendar than we use today. Ba chăng là nó không có mỗi bao nhiêu vị ngày, hay là ngày ngày đó là mỗi bảy năm cả lá, hay là việc chia protein không vì protein này nhưng phải sáu ngày. When these numbers are given in the book of Daniel and the book of Revelation, you've got to remember that they call it a prophetic year. Um, where um, where there was right now we have what 365 right 365 yeah yeah and, four hours. and so then but these years were 360 day 360 day years oh, how, how many how many days uh, Randy it's 365 right oh, four hours. yeah yeah, so back then, when John and Daniel are giving their prophecy, we've got a 360-day-a-year calendar. So five days last. They didn't make that our calendar official. Right. Ba ba chăng à ban ban đây tha pro tiền tinh bỏ bỏ dướng mà dưng hòa ngay dưng vỡ miền mà chín năm miền bơi ở học sập bèn thay ngay hay nâng ở buổi mau cũng to như thế. Bất tài vì muốn pro tiền tinh đại lục đại nhiên hay lục du hành tập đẹp như thế, cứ miền bơi ra học sập thay ngay. Okay, and so um, they're both using the same calendar. So we saw in Daniel when the Antichrist comes, he's going to try to make changes in laws and times and seasons. So it could be when the world ruler comes, he'll try to change the calendar again and make a new year and new time. Just a way of asserting control and power over the people. But we see, if you go back to Revelation, verse 4, his goal is to destroy uh, uh, the child. So we have to understand as we read the next chapters and we see all the judgments and all the things that Satan is doing, his main goal is to somehow destroy Jesus. And that's how he would try to ruin the plan of God. And so, after three and a half years, or the halfway point of this tribulation period, uh, the Antichrist is going to commit, he's going to 
generally be seen as good up to a certain point, but then at the three and a half year point, he's going to do a great abomination in the temple. Uh, Paul tells us that he's going to set up an image of himself in the temple and actually demand to be worshipped as God. So let's turn there and, and read that. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And we want to read verses 3 and 4. Alright, and so this is this happens right at the three and a half year point. And that, that's another reason why we believe the church goes up before this last year, this seven year period, this last uh, week of Daniel's prophecy. Yeah, we, because once this happened, any believer that knew their Bible on the earth, they would know to start counting. <laughs> they would know exactly when this thing ends and when Christ returns to the earth. Uh, and so some of these things are going to be so unmistakable. And this is one of them. <laughs> and so when we talk about the return of Jesus Christ, we believe it, it's, it's one event that happens in two stages. First stage is the church is caught up to be with the Lord in the air and taken to heaven. Those that believe on, uh, in the Lord. And those believers who had died, they're, they're resurrected and they're caught up. Right? And, and then there's the actual return of Christ with his church, with his saints, back to the earth, where he'll set up a kingdom for a thousand years and reign for a thousand years on a new heaven and a new heaven and a new earth. That happens and we see it in chapter 19, Jesus comes back. So when you think of the, the return of Christ, think of the, the rapture and rest of the church and the resurrection of believers going up to be with the Lord in the air, and then seven years later, Christ and all those coming back with them, where Christ pour, where Christ sets up His throne on the earth. And, and now, when this happens, when Antichrist does this great abomination, the abomination of desolation, that's when Israel runs to the wilderness. 
เรื่องราวได้กูเอาสอบกูต้องนั่งบานการลาได้กูได้เนี่ยประชาประกันกูนั่งนู่นให้กูจะไว้จะประกันปีมาทายไปบนเจ้าอีสระรถเตอร์วีร์เฮาส์ฮะโอเค now let's end here um, with just a, a note on verse 4 verse 4 mentions that the dragon his tail swept away a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth chapter 12 verse 4บางครั้งเขาบุ้นจะพูดได้ปีเหมือนยัยธากระตุ้ยวิ่งกอดตีนกายในเลือมเมฆมวยเพียงครั้งใบกระวัดเจ้าเตอร์แพนได้ and the dragon stood before the woman representing Israel who was about to give birth so that when she gave birth he might devour her child บาไฮเนี่ยนุ่งกอดทัดในตรังมุกสตรีได้รีบนำสมาโตนุ่งดำใบหนึ่งเล็บก้นเนี่ยขนมกาได้มาสมาจัยหมอกไปยืนเคยได้กระตุ้ยเราบอกเนี่ยนั่งบานเตียงกับวัดบุพเพขนมใบกายในเลือมเมฆยังจัย verse 9 same chapter it says and the great dragon was thrown down and the serpent of old who is called the devil and satan who deceives the whole world was thrown down to the earth And his angels were thrown down with him. So these were angels. ประสมสมือคอผมบุญติดนุ่งเนี่ยโค้งในพื้นชีพผู้ปีโบราณแต่ชมูหาวิทาอาเรศหาวซาตังคองแต่บานน้อมลูกไก่แตงบูลอ้อยของเวจิ้งเวตรบอกตุ่มเด็กแต่พันใดเวงตรองแตงปุ่เตมดาระบอกเวพองแต่ฉะนั้นคือเนี่ยนั่งเนี่ยนั่งคือจีบเตมดาแหละ And so remember in the book of Isaiah when Isaiah is describing Satan. He called him the star of the morning. That, that was in Isaiah 14. If you want to check that out. So we believe from this passage that a host of demons. Who now serve Satan and deceive the world are really fallen angels. They were they were angels that were cast down to the earth. But just like you know, the the like this, the church, you know, you know, the the Satan, the 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 You remember uh, when Jesus cast out a legion of demons out of the demoniac when that guy was crazy and in the mountains and chained up and he had thousands of demons in him. How they begged Jesus. To cast them into the swine and not to throw them into the abyss, because they knew they know that a day is coming when they will find when they will be cast into the abyss to suffer forever. And so it shouldn't surprise us, you know, on Earth when we see spirits and ghosts and things like that. This is just demonic activity. These are angels, fallen angels, sinful angels that rebel against God, that try to trick people and hold them in fear. But just like some of you may have thought, some of you got here, ah, the people that you know, they mean, 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 they mean. วิภพโลกนั้นวิภูยึดนั้นทางเวชีเตวดาได้ประชังชมวยนางปองชีเตวดาได้เชียร์ยิมทัวร์ยิมตอนนี้ไปดักไปชิงดีปองให้บงไฟพานในการของปองแต่ปนอก So we got Satan and his angels here. We'll read more about them next week, and uh, we're gonna stop there, uh, and we'll finish the chapter next week. ไปตัดกรอยทำได้ยังเคยทำเนียนยังไปจอบทำมาเรียห้อยนั่ง Can you get a better look at that dragon? And these stars are angels. Demons, really. 
And we're going to see two battles next week. We're going to see a war that takes place in heaven and a war on earth. Okay, so let's, we'll continue. These are the events that are happening, remember? at the seventh trumpet. So we're studying the seventh trumpet still. Alright, let's pray. Lord, we're thankful as we look at the passage and we see that um, already in chapter 13 we see that Satan is going to be destroyed. You allow him for a season to have power. And uh, you, but you also give us power to overcome him. And we see his plan. His plan is always, ultimately, to some way to destroy you. And he, he tries to do that by hurting us. And in the tribulation period, it will be Israel. And so we pray, Lord God, that uh, we would stand in the battle. We would realize we have every day we wake up and we're in a spiritual war. Even now, even today. And that we would truly learn how to fight that, that battle in prayer. You've given us open access to your throne, just like they saw here uh, when the seventh trumpet was blown. Heaven was open to them. Heaven is open to us because of Jesus Christ. And even though your throne is, is awesome and powerful, your word says it's a throne of grace. And you allow us to come to that throne in prayer and ask you for whatever we have need of. And so, Lord, we want to pray. We want to stand upon the word of God. We want to act in faith and testify to your greatness and to your wonderful salvation, Lord. We don't want to be quiet about who you are. But we want to let the world know. Lord, fill us with your Holy Spirit. Continue to give us understanding of this amazing blood. Overflow our lives with your love and cause us to, to love you, Lord, and love those all around us, God. We thank you and we praise you. In the wonderful name of Jesus, who is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. In His name we pray. Amen. Amen.